Hello viewers, welcome to part 2 of the subwoofer amplifier install on my 2017 Nissan Pathfinder. Now if you watched the first video, I showed you how to run the power cable from the battery all the way to the back trunk area and also install an inline fuse for extra protection. I also showed you where to tap the remote turn on wire so you can have remote turn on for your amplifier. As for the left and right audio channel signal, I'll be using the high level to low level converter built into the amplifier. And I got the audio signal from the speaker wires that were previously connected to the Bose subwoofer. So let's continue with the installation and I'll show you how I mounted the amplifier and how I built the subwoofer box for the 10 inch kicker subwoofer. So let's get right into it. In the last video, I showed you how I ran all the wires you need for the amplifier. Now it's very important that you disconnect the power wire connection to the battery or remove the fuse in the fuse holder and that will eliminate any risk of short circuit. To mount the amplifier, I cut this piece of quarter inch board that I'll screw into the tub. After test fitting it and making sure it fits, I'll paint it black. Here's a painted board. I'll now install it. Next, I'll place the amplifier on the board. Now connect the wires to the amp, starting with the power wire. Next is a remote wire. Now connect the ground wire. This is speaker output wire that will go to the subwoofer. And screw it in place. Now I should mention this is actually an older amp that I've had for many years. It's a fairly good amp and I didn't find a need to buy a new one. So that's why I'm reusing it. But for your install you can choose whatever amplifier you like. And the connection I'm showing you will be the same for all amplifiers. Now if the amplifier you have does not have a high to low converter input, then you can purchase a line level converter, which I'll include the link below. Here I'm connecting the two pairs of high level speaker wire from the Bose amplifier to the high to low level converter on the amplifier. So the amplifier will get the audio signal from these two pair of wires. And here's a look at the connected wires. Now I'll reinstall the side door. Now for this install, I'll be installing one Kicker C10 subwoofer. And with any subwoofer, it will come with a user manual. The manual will have information on the size of the box you want to build. So for example, this will tell you the sealed enclosure should have a minimum volume of 1 cubic feet and a maximum volume of 2.4 cubic feet. It also has information on how you should build a box. Now if you want to build a vented enclosure, it will also give you the minimum volume with this comp 10, it's 1.25 cubic feet. It will also have information on the port size and the maximum volume of the enclosure, which is 1.75 cubic feet. Now the box I'll be building is 1.5 cubic feet, and I made a drawing and some calculation for the box. The calculated internal volume is 1.537 cubic feet, and I'll be using a four inch round port, and it'll be tuned to around 39 hertz. The material I'll be using is half inch MDF. Now it is recommended use three quarter inch MDF, but the reason I'm going with half inch MDF is to keep the weight down and I will install braces on all four sides inside the box. Here's a look at the box I built. It's 22 inch long by 12 inch high and 12 and a half inch wide. Use a jigsaw to cut the speaker opening. For the round port, I'm using 4 inch PVC pipe. I cut the length to 12 inch. Cut the opening for the 4 inch port and make sure it fits snugly. Then use epoxy glue to glue the pipe in place. And to make sure there's no air leak, Seal the inside edges with silicone adhesive. I also rounded the outside edge of the box using a round over router bit. The next step is to paint the box. Here I'm spraying two coats of gray primer. Here's a look at the box with two coats of primer. Now I'll put down the base coat which is a black color. The color that I'm spraying is a semi-gloss black and I'll do two coats of this.
While the paint is drying, I'm using a Cricut machine to make two stickers with a kicker logo that will go on the side of the subwoofer box. Here are the two stickers I made. Now spray a coat of semi-gloss clear. This will help protect the paint finish. Now install the speaker cup. Here I'll connect the speaker wire to the terminal. Now when you're installing the screws for the subwoofer, be very careful that you don't slip and you don't poke a hole into the speaker with a screwdriver. What I like to do is face the handle towards the center, so if you slip, it'll go outwards. Here's a look at the finished box. Now connect the speaker wire from the amplifier to the subwoofer. Here's a look at the installed subwoofer. If I want to, I can also turn the subwoofer sideways so the entire sub is against the back seat and this will give me space back here. With everything wired up, now connect the power wire to the car battery. And here's a look at the installed power wire. As to how to set your amplifier, make sure you refer to your user manual. This amplifier does have a built-in crossover, and I've set it for low pass, which means it'll only pass low frequency for the subwoofer. And the crossover frequency is set to 80 Hz. And with the gain, you want to start at the minimum setting. And with the stereo set to about 3 quarter volume, increase the gain until you start hearing some distortion, and then back it off so you don't hear any distortion. The next thing is to build a cover panel for the amp. Here I cut a template using a piece of cardboard. That has the shape that I need. I'll transfer this over to a quarter inch MDF and cut it out. I cut this piece here that'll fit exactly on top of the amp. And then I'll cut a hole right in the middle here. So you'll be able to see the amp in the middle. I'll use a router to add a 45 degree bevel edge on this piece. I'm in the process of cutting this trim piece that will go underneath this top piece right here. Here's what the trim piece looks like. Here's another look at the trim panel. I added these two cutouts right here and I think you'll like the final look when everything's done. So here I'm painting this piece black. Here are the other trim pieces. I also have a grill that I painted silver. Here I'm assembling the trim pieces together. I'm using some epoxy to glue the pieces in place. So right now I'm installing an LED strip around the edge and this will give the amplifier an accent lighting. And here's a look at what the LED looked like. So to turn on the LED light on this panel, I wired up this relay so that it will use a reach switch and turn on when I open the storage lid and turn off when I close the storage lid. 
Here's a relay that fed the power wire behind the panel and it's connected to the 12 volt accessory port. And these are the connections right here. To test it out, I connected the LED to the relay and here's a re-switch. If I move the magnet, you'll see it turn on. And this magnet will be mounted on the lid right here. To install the panel, simply put this down. There are legs underneath to hold it up. And I also made this divider that fits exactly in this slot. I'll mount the magnet underneath the cover right here. And then once I close the lid, it'll turn off. Here you see I installed the magnet on the lid right here. Now if I close the lid, the light will turn off. When I open it, it'll turn on. And here's a look at the finished project. As you can see, I still have a lot of space for storage. If I need to, I can remove this subwoofer very easily. If I open this up, you'll see the amplifier. Now I have more storage on this side here. All right, let's have a listen to the system. So the installation is now complete. In this video, I showed you how I built the subwoofer box and also how I installed the amplifier and built the lighted accent cover. I did spend some time to adjust the gain on the amplifier so the sound of the subwoofer matches the sound coming from the factory speakers. If you watch the first video and this video, you now have a good understanding of how to install an amplifier and subwoofer into your vehicle while maintaining the factory radio. Now I might do a third video just to wrap things up and share with you my thoughts on the overall install and also the different type of subwoofer boxes you can install in your car. Anyways, I hope you enjoy watching this video. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching this video. To support this channel, remember to click on thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and turn on the notification bell so you get notified of new videos.